Week 11 might be the most exciting week on the high school football calendar. That's right. Huge rivalry games and the last chance for teams to clinch a spot in the playoffs. And we've got it right here for you right now. The song has never lied. This is Football Friday Night presented by Lexus of Orlando. I'm Joe Kepner. And I'm Jared Oliver. We're going to start with the oldest rivalry in Central Florida, Boone versus Edgewater, a game that has been around since 1952. Yeah, and I said Lexus of Orlando. I meant McCoy Federal Credit Union is the sponsor there of this go. show. I apologize Gotta for that. Pay yes. the bills. 1952, <laughs> the same year Elizabeth II was proclaimed Queen of England, which has nothing to do with high school football, but neither does a barrel. Hmm. They keep playing for that every year anyway. Edgewater trying to hold on to the most coveted barrel in America for a fourth straight year. And buckle up, because this one is going to get wild. Boone receiving the ball first. And before the rain had enough time to make your popcorn soggy, we have our first turnover. Edgewater recovering the fumble. But a few plays later, Eagles' field goal try is blocked. So no harm for the Braves. Ensuing drive for Boone now. Casey St. John dumps it short to Ja'Cory Thomas, and he gets swifty. Breaking tackles, then breaking some more tackles, and then breaking away for a 72-yard touchdown and a 7-0 Boone lead. But on the very next play from scrimmage, Edgewater goes with the best play they have. It's called give it to C.J. Baxter. The four-star running back, just a junior, tears off 80 yards of artificial turf. Still in the first now. Couple drives later. Casey St. John to Aiden Mizell. One of the most lethal combinations in Central Florida this year. That's a 46-yard touchdown. And that puts Boone back in front. But then in the second. Yeah, we're just now getting to the second. Chase Carter over the middle to Jeremiah Connolly. He sprints away. 48-yard touchdown. Big plays all over the place. Game tied at 14. Eagles get the ball back one more time before the half. And Carter looking for six more finds it in the waiting arms of Camp McGee. Edgewater with a 20 to 14 lead at the half. But the Braves regroup in the locker room and Legarius Marshall rips the lead back with a 27 yard touchdown run. This game not even close to finish. Edgewater retakes the lead on a kickoff return. Then after a boom fumble right there, it's Baxter eating the whole wheel of cheese again tonight. 14 point Edgewater lead heading into the fourth. But Boone not ready to give up on that barrel. Four minutes to go. St. John to Harrison White in the end zone. It's a seven-point game. Braves get the ball back. Minute to play. St. John looking for something that wasn't there. Thomas Anderson seals it with the interception. Edgewater holds on to that barrel for a fourth straight year. 35-28. Shane Whitehead was there for it all. He caught up with Eagles head coach Cameron Duke after the win. A tough game against a really good opponent. You know, could have gone either way tonight. And, and uh, you know, so many assets, facets of the game. I didn't love how we played. But, you know, coming on the road and uh, against a really good team and finding a way to get a win and keep the barrel, you know, at, at the end of the day, I'm, it's hats off to this team and our senior class. Are you peaking at the right time? We'll see. We'll see if we can come back and look at the mistakes that we made uh, from this game and get them corrected heading into the playoffs. Uh, we're fortunate to have them at home this first round. And we'll see kind of where everything falls Sunday at 2 like everybody else, but we're hoping to, we're hoping we still get better. Um, I think some areas we have, but there's still a lot of growth for this team, and I think uh, hopefully the best is yet to come. Like last year, do you feel a run in this group? You know, we'll see. I think to make a run, you know, you got to, like you said, click at the right time, and you got to um, play really good football for a long time. So we're hoping that we're still getting better, and, and uh, you know, we're, we love that we get a chance to be at home next week. Um, but there were some really good things. We got a really good good group of kids, and we're hoping that, that leadership continues to rise. And, you know, if you have great leadership, you got a chance in the playoffs. So we're hoping to see guys continue to lead in a great way.